You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. I love this song. Is this Boogie Woogie, Woogie Bugler Boy, you think? Yes. Got to wait a minute. He was a famous trumpet man from all Chicago. I love that song. Way. I love the Andrews sisters. No well, we're back. Would, this is Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Man. We're broadcasting from the Natural Green Lawn and Landscape Studios. We're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors and by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. As an American family insurance agent, Kim believes there's much more to insurance than the policy itself. It's about providing you with dependable protection and services. Kim believes that trust and credibility can't be demanded. It can only be earned by what you say and what you do. Give Kim a call at 651-482-1598 and tell her you heard it here on Where You Live. It's time now for a message from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. This MHA Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all of your home and business maintenance needs. Call them at 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, and for your peace of mind. If you're renting out a property for the first time, there's a lot you need to know so that you can do it successfully and, frankly, keep yourself out of trouble. Luckily, there's a statewide resource with all the tools you need to run your new business successfully. In fact, the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association regularly holds a seminar called Accidental Landlord, specifically designed for people who are renting out a property for the first time. They also have residential leases, security deposit agreements, a lead disclosure, and lots of other forms. They even have brochures on the principles of successful property management and the eviction process that you can download for free. So if you want to know more about the Accidental Landlord Seminar or other classes about owning, managing, or maintaining anything from a single unit to a growing apartment portfolio, visit the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association's website, mmha.com. That's two M's, mmha.com. So we're talking about the Star Tribune story. The Minnesota That's State right. Legislature is busy, busy, busy coming up with proposed legislation to modify the foreclosure process again yes. in Minnesota. And this particular issue that this story refers to is what's called dual tracking. Yes. Where on the one hand, the bank says they're working with you to modify your loan, but on at the same time, they're going through the foreclosure process. Yes. And, and it's, I, it's unfortunate that uh, this uh, Ms. Crawford uh, went through this situation where she lost her job for a few months because of an accident. Uh, she got back on her feet again, it sounded like, uh, as you read on in the story. But there are some things that I found kind of uh, interesting. Uh, listen to this quote from uh, from Miss Crawford. She, uh, she said, uh, she apparently, here we go, she bought a home in Frogtown, so a part of uh, St. Paul, uh, for about $40,000 a few years ago. And she said, and here's her quote, if I had known that I was risking foreclosure, she said I would have found a way to make the mortgage payments. <laughs> I noticed that too. I highlighted that in the article. <laughs> I, I, and I, I, it, it made me think, what? Are, are, are you? I think is this she had, for real? Yeah, it seems like she had the wrong idea in mind. She, like she, like you, you started to say in the earlier segment, she hit some trouble. She hit a, a, a an obstacle in her in her plans and in her path, and so she thought she could just renegotiate her loan with the bank, and that they shouldn't foreclose and on her for missing payments. That's what I mean. There's a mindset in society that we have that I get a do over in everything in life. I see. That's what you're leading there, up there's, to. There's that do over, and what? that's not what hey, loan modification was meant for. No. It was meant to help people avoid foreclosure. But to say, you know. If I re- if I realized that they were going to foreclose, take my property away because I wasn't making yeah. payments, I yeah. guess I would have made the payments. Later on, she made the, this quote. She said, the foreclosure was not my fault. Well, it wasn't the... F- I'm sorry that she had <laughs> bad things that happened to her. That's right. But, but it, it was not the fault of the bank no, or the wasn't. lending institution either. She's not the right poster child for this story. She really isn't. Uh, she- I did... She said, I did what the bank told me to do, and uh, they're making money or kicking me out of my home. And I want to go and zero in on the phrase, not my fault. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that aren't our fault, but are 
our responsibility. That's absolutely right. And that's a great distinction to make. You know, I I remember I had a dog that uh, jumped over the fence years ago uh-huh. and got into uh, got into the neighbor's trash and made a mess, okay? It's uh, not my fault <laughs> that the dog went into the neighbor's yard because I had a fence I and I sure, had the fence Sure, you didn't closed. deliberately let the dog into their yard. But it was, but it happened. It was my responsibility. That's right. You know? That's and, right. Uh, but we want to say that things, if they're not my uh, if they're not my fault, then they should not be my responsibility. That's the mindset. And yeah. I'm sorry, folks, if you buy a home, you've got to make those payments because it. if not, you get the home taken away from that's you. Right. That's and right. That's right. That I, seems I can, drastic, but the bank has got to be responsible to their investors and other people right. who are putting right. money. In. I, I am willing to bet and guarantee that the bank never said, Miss Crawford, if you work with us on a loan modification, we will not foreclose on your home. I bet they never said that. Yeah. It's a situation where she misunderstood the situation. She misunderstood the purpose. And now she's the yes. bank is doing what it has I, to do. I think that's part of it. And this idea of the, the dual tracking. Here's the other aspect of what's taking place in our society, I believe, when people are not taking resp- personal responsibility responsibility Mm -hmm. and are saying, well, if it's not my fault, then it's not my responsibility. Um, When you take a look at a a transaction like the purchase of a home, one of the things that we know by law, by state statute everywhere in the United States, there are three things that are, are specific. It says you need to be an adult. That means you need to be of age, over the age of 21, because they want to have at least some years of experience. People have gone through life and have an understanding. Two other things, you have to be sane. In other words, you have to be of a sound mind, and that makes sense. So you know what it is that you're getting into. The third thing is you need to be sober. In other words, you can't can't be someone who is uh, in under the influence of uh, uh, of drugs or other things, so you're not of sound mind. Sure. You have that expectation. Mm-hmm. You when, And when you go into it, there used to be a saying that people would say before you purchase something, and it was buyer beware. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. remember that? Of course. You're supposed to know what you're doing. Yes. You're supposed to educate yourself so that you understand what you're doing. You understand and you realize that you have two people who in a transaction who have different goals. And so they're going to be just like you're going to be more self-serving in your interests, they're going to be more self-serving in theirs. Mm-hmm. And for someone to say I didn't realize the mortgage company, the lender was going to be more self-serving and just thinking <laughs> about what's best for him. Well, again, there are no, there are no, uh, you know, no uh, do-overs uh, in in life all the time. You well, know? and it, it goes along with the attitude we've talked about over and over and over again, where people expect the government to take care of them. They expect, I guess, now yeah. banking institutions to take care of them. Now, having said that, I don't agree with what, hap- with what happened to Ms. Crawford. Uh, I, yeah. I think the whole loan modification idea was pretty much a joke. Yeah, I, I have heard of so few people that it actually worked for. So that bothers me. Yeah, I, I, that I think the me. whole loan modification was something quickly put, uh, put together by uh, our politicians in Washington to help out uh, the the banks because they're too big to, quote, fail, right? Uh, and to say, we're doing something because there's this idea that politicians have, we got to do something and say, so they look. Were offering they were offering to support the banks and, and pay some money in if the oh, banks yeah. would modify these loans. But I, I it happens so seldom. Here's a couple of things that's interesting in this whole uh, issue of uh, trying to deal with uh, this foreclosure issue right now. Uh, a Tess Rice, who's general counsel, for the Minnesota Bankers Association said banks would prefer to wait to not see any legislation in Minnesota to see what sort of regulations come out of Congress and the new federal consumer uh, 
Financial Protection Bureau oh. before anything takes place. There's going to be a new agency? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? That's what that sounds like, doesn't it? I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. All right. But anyway, the, the idea is why, you know, the bank, uh, the Banker Association said, why don't we wait a little bit? Because sure. they were concerned. They said, if more laws are passed by the legislature in any particular state, they said they don't realize that they will increase the risk for lenders to say it is no longer safe to offer money in this to state. Minnesotans. And so now you'll have lending institutions pulling services from that state, and now people will have less opportunity to be able to finance and refinance mm-hmm. homes, mm-hmm. and now you're going to make a bigger issue At the issue very least, it's going to push the interest rates up. Unintended consequences. Yeah, there you there go. There always there you go. are with everything. Well, that's all the time we've got for folks. Uh, have a great rest of the uh, weekend, won't you? Uh, join us next Saturday here on Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We've got a lot more because the legislature is in session. <laughs> Bye. How sweet it is. Tough to say goodbye.